Let me tell you, most Charlotte Mason homeschoolers are learning as we go. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. You know, sometimes we look at other Charlotte Mason homeschoolers around us and we think, wow, look at everything they know. And we think they've always known about the artists and the composers and the nature and the handicrafts. But that's not the case, let me assure you. All of us have had to learn as we go along. Here to help me discuss that topic is Amber O'Neill Johnston. Thanks for joining us again, Amber. Oh, you're welcome. I'm excited to be here. This whole idea of learning as we go, can you relate to that at all? Absolutely. <laughs> it's something I'm const I feel like I'm constantly letting moms know, experienced and new Charlotte Mason moms that I have not always known what I know today and I'm still learning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's back up. Mm -hmm. Tell us how long you've been doing Charlotte Mason and how you got started. So we'll kind of back the camera up a little bit and start at the beginning. Okay, yeah. So we've been doing this for six years, and then I had a year of study before we started. So I had been introduced to her principles and ideas really early on, and thankfully I had a year where I was nursing a baby and had time to sit and read and read and read, and I spent that time. And then since then, we've been actively pursuing it for six years. And so... When you started in, I'm assuming you didn't know everything about everything in the Charlotte Mason approach. Yeah. What subjects would you say were the biggest learning curve? All of them? No. <laughs> <laughs> everything except math? Um, no. I think that, in a, I mean, I'm joking, but in a way I'm also serious. I was mm -hmm. not what you could consider to be an expert on anything other than kind of your basic subjects that I had in school. But even then, the way that we do them is so different than how it was. I mean, I took AP history in high school and did well with it. This is totally different than that. This yeah. is not that. What we're doing, I mean, we're just living it out um, through our books. So I would say I wasn't an expert at any of them. Some of the more challenging ones for me were the artists and composers. Um, part of it were the pronunciations. Like these oh, were words yeah. that I had seen before in my reading, but I really was never around a group of people who were talking out loud mm -hmm. about these people. I always joke about I had heard of Monette. Yes, that's yeah. basically, well, I always share a story that I took my kids and I was like, we're going to go. We went to the Art Institute in Chicago and we got an Airbnb and, and we made this big deal about it and we're going to go see people. And I went to the desk and I was like, can you please share, show me the direction to the um, pictures by David. And he was like, David, David. I was like, yeah, these, I want to show my kids. And he was like, oh, it's David. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> and so that was just like, a, I, I said, this is me right here, you know? But you know what? I was there with my children and I yeah. showed them those pictures and I had, I laughed at myself and I said, you don't know what you don't know. It looks like David to me. So, mm -hmm. um, and so I think that was an area. Um, I grew up playing the cello and so was exposed to all types of classical music, but I approached my music as a subject in school, just like chuck it, you mm. play it and move on. I never listened to that music. And so, you know, being uh, accustomed to hearing it and hearing it and playing it around the house and connecting it with certain artists. Nature study, I tell people I was raised in the air conditioning and so I go out in nature and do what? I don't fish. I don't hunt. So I couldn't really, you know, possibly know. So I think almost every subject that we are, all of our lessons now, almost all of it was new to me. And as you said, there's the, the body of information in that subject. Like you had taken AP history, so you had memorized the facts, yeah. I'm assuming. Yes. And so you had some of the information, but you didn't have all the information. No. But then there's also that whole body of the methods being used. And so when you put those two together, I think most homeschool parents have to deal with the content. I don't remember how to do algebra, yes. those types of, of challenges. But when you throw in, now we're going to do it a whole different way. Yes. That's, I think, 
it can seem like a, a scary obstacle almost. It feels overwhelming. And I think for me, what I've found is just getting started is the hardest part because, you know, history, for example, I'm like, I don't know. But when we started reading these books, it was so interesting and it started coming alive in such a tangible way that it became, it almost it's like the subject taught itself. Yes. Um, and I, I was able to take a back seat and I could say, I learned history, but I never heard these stories. I learned about things and events and dates, but not people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is a different, a different beast. And so I, I almost became, I feel like in a lot of ways I'm guiding my children, but I'm also sitting next to them. We're kind of on this trip together, right? We're taking a trolley ride and I'm maybe the seat in front of them, but I'm still on the same trolley. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're following out this path together. So is that where you started with history? Is that the first subject? It you? is. Okay. Because I had read that so many things were rooted in that and you're going to really go into your time period. And also we had been spending time, a lot of time out in our community. So we were used to going to, this is before formal lessons started, we were used to going to the local museums and, you know, we're in Georgia where there's a lot of rich history um, just all around us, uh, pretty much everywhere we go. And so that was the easiest thing for me to grasp hold of and to kind of root some of those other things. I don't know which artist to pick. I don't know which composer. But once I saw what we were doing in history, it made it easier for me to at least have an idea where to start with some of the other lessons that we would add in. So then how did you approach that? Do you remember? Yes. How I, did you go about it? I went to the Simply Charlotte Mason website. <laughs> I mean, I, I hesitate to say that, but I also can't think of something else fast enough. But just because the composer studies and the, the artist folders, um, I could look at the dates on them because I really didn't know. I mean, yes, I've heard of Beethoven and Bach and Mozart, Mozart, but I didn't know what years they were born and lived in, honestly. Right. And I didn't know how to match up um, artists and, and, and which pictures to pick and... I didn't know at the time. I'm still trying to figure out what living a living biography is, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't sure what to look for even at the library. And I I wanted this so badly, but I couldn't do it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So where there were opportunities where some of this had been organized for me, I kind of went with that. I looked and, and I saw a lot of times, what, what were other people doing? I, you know, when you studied this time period, I would look online and see what, what are some of the other moms doing. And I didn't just blindly pick that, but at least it narrowed down the playing field for me where I could say, these are the artists, these are the composers, this poet has wonderful um, poetry for children that may relate to some of the things that or some of the experiences that we're talking about. It gave me an opportunity to narrow down the playing field where I could select from a smaller group of things. So I think that was an important part for me. I often think of it like spinning plates, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to get the history plate spinning. And once we're comfortable with that, then we're going to add in the music study plate and get that one spinning. And then, okay, now let's take a dive into, into, uh, composers and sure. add that in. But then as I was going through, I went through the same process. Yeah. I didn't have Simply Charlotte Mason to go to, but I went through the same process of finding other people and just doing research. Yes. And it's a, it's a journey. Uh, um, and I'm still learning more things Absolutely. now. Still, I remember um, I got history going pretty well. And one of the first things I did was narration, mm -hmm. learning how to do narration. But about five years into it, I discovered I'd been doing a narration lesson wrong. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> yeah, I knew the concept of tell it back in your own words, yes. but I had not fine-tuned it into first you review, yes. then you set up this today's reading, now we read and narrate. I was missing that whole first chunk. Sure. And so we're still learning as we go. And I'm still learning as I go. I'm still trying to figure out new handcrafts. And, yeah. and it took me many years uh, before I realized how Charlotte actually taught spelling. Oh, yes. I was using a spelling curriculum. Sure. Because that's, you know, that was one area I hadn't researched yet. Yes. 
And because there are so many subjects we put in to a Charlotte Mason education, there are so many subjects to research. Yes, you can't become an expert at all of them all at the same time. And I found that same situation with me. You, you bring up spelling. When I was doing dictation, I'm just like, here you go. Study this. I'll be back, you know? <laughs> and so I wasn't walking through that passage with my children. We weren't kind of looking at maybe what some of the words are that might trip us up or talking about it. Um, it was just here's something that we're going to do next and, and you're going to study this and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to read it to you one time and you're going to write it all out. And, and it's going to be perfect. Yes. yes. And yeah. then when I'm like, oh, it's just not working, you know? And so that's just something that we've had to grow into and it's been okay. One thing that has given me a lot of peace is that I feel that even with all of the subjects that we don't execute perfectly on from the very beginning, okay? So let's just take what we are doing well, and then all of the other things that we're learning and growing on, I still feel even at the baseline that it's a beautiful education my children are receiving. Yes. And so that's one of the things that helps center me, that I don't start feeling anxious about what I don't know or what we haven't done or when I find out that we should have been doing something differently. I think what we were doing is so far above and beyond um, what I did, you know, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, that it's still good. Yes. It's still good. Yes. So I think that helps. It does. And you hit on a good point. It's so easy for us to, when we discover, oh, I haven't been doing this exactly as Charlotte Mason outlined or in a way that would work best with my child. Mm -hmm. There's still more to learn about this particular subject. It's so easy for us to fall into what I call bad mommy syndrome, you know? Mm -hmm. Just give me the bad mommy trophy. I'll put it on the shelf with all the others. Mm -hmm. How can we encourage our listeners in that area that we're all still at this together? Nobody is doing everything perfectly in all the subjects. Yes. No, it's so true. And I think for a long time, especially if you're someone who watches a lot of videos or reads online, a lot of in the Charlotte Mason community, you start feeling like Charlotte Mason moms are these amazing people who know everything about everything. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling bad about myself, but I started really looking and I'm like, you know, she knows a lot about nature and nature study. She knows a lot about different types of handicrafts. And this mom over here is really, really excellent with the living math. And, and separately, they are all kind of sharing with the community within their gifting. But this is not just one composite woman who knows all of these things at top level and that we all have different gifting. And for some of us, and myself, and I would use as an example, it's not this one subject area that's a Charlotte Mason lesson where you are like gung-ho about that area. But some of us are a little bit, you know, Janes of all trades. And so, you know, I feel in my house, we, we do, we hit everything. We do a little bit of everything and it's good and we're getting better. Um, but I don't have like a Wonder Woman area that I just really stand out in. And that's okay too. So I think just being more realistic in the fact that none of us have, um, a superpower in being able to know everything about every lesson, you know, that Charlotte Mason, you know, laid before us. But part of the fun and the learning is the journey. It's getting there. So I think there are resources, you know, we can depend on and lean into to help with those things as we go. Yes, absolutely. And it's funny that when you say you're kind of the Jane of all trades, it's like you are rising the tide across the board, it looks like to other people, yes. you know? Everything's going up at the same time. And other moms really excel in this area or excel in this area. But when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that people who know you, your longtime friends, yes. who know you from pre-Charlotte Mason days, yes. look at you and what do they say? Who are you? <laughs> This is like the person I am today is totally different than who I was before I started on this path. And it, it, it amazes even me. I'm kind of like, who am I? Um, but it gives me so much hope and that um, I just each day taking the next step. And I do set goals and I'll, I'll think for this, for this school year, we are going to watercolor. 
and we are going to love it and be good at it. And you know, in some so some years we do dig in deeper in a certain area where I see that I haven't been, maybe I've been shying away because I have no idea what I'm doing, um, and I'll just intentionally lean in there. So I think that um, we can change. That's one thing. We can legitimately change over time if that's what we'd like to do. And that a lot of the change comes naturally. It doesn't all have to be clawed for through really hard work. Mm. For me, I think more than it being hard is about it being consistent. And I feel like I am consistently working to learn more, but I'm not scrambling or forcing it. It's just coming along as we go. And that is so much what we want our kids to learn, yeah. isn't it? it is. that, that science of relations is a gradual process. Those, those constant, small constant touches are going to add up to something great. And we don't want to force and pressure our children. No. You must learn all of this in all of these areas, and you better do it whether it's fun or not, you know? <laughs> and it's the same for us yeah. as we are learning these things. I like how you, you highlighted that aspect, that it is a journey, and we can enjoy the journey Instead of saying, I haven't got to that goal yet, yes. and get tunnel vision and not even look at the journey as we go. That's right. That's what's making me enjoying, you know, enjoy what I'm doing. I'm having fun, and I, I'm, I'm growing as a person, and my children are growing too. And that's something we're showing our kids too, that learning, growing, and continuing to grow and learn throughout our entire lives is enjoyable. That's right, it's pleasurable. Yeah. It's something that's worthwhile and it feels good. Thanks, Amber. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version or read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.